Let's try this partial fractions question here. The first one is to, the first part of this question is just to find the decomposition. And then the next part is to use that decomposition to evaluate the integral. So the first thing I notice here is that x squared minus 1 is not factored. And I think we should factor that. Of course, x squared minus 1 is just x minus 1 times x plus 1. But I hope you know x squared plus 4, since that's a sum of squares, that cannot be factored. So x squared plus 4 has to be left alone. And if we quickly, why don't I put x squared minus 1 at the start? And like we said, let's rewrite that as x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then x squared plus 4 we'll put afterwards. And I'm going to center this to make it look a little bit nicer. So right there is this, this is the same thing as that. And we, we know just from how to do partial fractions that this is going to de decompose. Um, x minus one is going to lead to this term. This x plus one is going to lead to this term. And this quadratic here, this irreducible quadratic, it will not just be c over x squared plus 4, right? It has to be cx plus d. That's just the way these partial fractions decompose. So we really, we didn't even, all of this stuff, we, we know that, right? Even if that wasn't given to us, we should know that this decomposes as that. Great. Um, so let's start on this. Let's multiply both sides by this denominator. When I multiply this by that denominator, they cancel off, and I'm left with 2x. Here's my a. Uh, the x minus 1's cancel, and I'm left with x plus 1, x squared plus 4. When I multiply this fraction by this denominator, the x plus 1 on bottom cancels with the x plus 1 on top. And what do I have left over on top? x minus 1 and x squared plus 4. And of course, the b is still there too. And on this last one, I have cx plus d. And I multiply it by x squared plus 4. Uh, sorry, I multiply this entire thing by this in entire denominator. The x squared plus 4s cancel. And what's left over is these two factors, x minus 1 and x plus 1. Great. So here's our new uh, equation. And from this, we're going to be able to find the values of a, b, c, and d. Why don't we start by letting x be, say, negative 1. That's 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. When I put negative 1 in here, I get 0. So this entire term is wiped out and becomes 0. What about here? Well, the b stays negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, plus 4 gives me a 5. And when I put negative 1 in here, this is 0, so this entire term becomes 0. Now, um, these negative 2s go away, so really I have 1 equals 5b, so b is 1 fifth. Great. Let's let x be equal to 1 now. When x is 1, well, 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, the a stays. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Uh, when I put 1 in there, that's 0, and so the entire thing is 0. When I put 1 in there, it's 0, so that entire thing is 0. And so we have 2 equals 10a, so a is 1 over 5. So it turns out here that a and b are both 1 over 5. Now, we really, at this point, uh, we've, we, there is no number which makes x squared plus 4 0, right? The reason I chose 1 and minus 1 here is because that's what made those guys 0. And that was nice because it wiped out these two terms in each of these equations. And also it wiped out this term. And that's what allowed us to find a and b so easily. But now with x squared plus 4, we got to just start putting in different numbers. And I think it's pretty natural to put in 0 at this point. So when I put in 0, 2 times 0 is 0. Uh, a is 1 fifth. Uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 
1 squared plus 4, uh, sorry, 0 squared plus 4 is 4, plus the value of b, which is 1 fifth. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 0 squared plus 4 is 4. Uh, when I put in 0 here, c, whatever c is, c times 0 is 0, so 0 plus d, that's just d. Uh, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Good. Um, well, look at this. Um, 1 fifth times 4 is 4 fifths. And here I have negative 4 fifths, so this actually cancels with that. So what I really end up here is 0 equals negative d. And that means that d is 0. And the fact that d is 0, that's going to make our lives easier when we come to do the integral later. Now let's just make up another number. Uh, really, I guess 2 is a natural choice. What do we get? 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, a is 1 fifth. 2 plus 1 here is 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. B is also 1 fifth. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Just like over here. Plus um, C times 2, which is just 2C. D is 0, so I'm not going to bother writing plus 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So there we go. Uh, what does all this stuff turn out to be? Well, this is uh, 24 over 5. And this is 8 over 5. So I think that's 32 over 5. And if we bring it to the other side, we would have 4 minus 32 over 5, which gives negative 12 over 5. And what about this side? This is 6c, right? So I have to do negative 12 over 5 divided by 6. And that gives us negative 2 fifths. So I'm going to need more room here. So we have just determined each of the values of a, b, and c. Great. That actually completes part a, right? Part a just said determine the constants a, b, c, and d which satisfy this equation. Here are the values of a and b. Here's the value of d. And this here is the value of c. Now, the next question, part b here, is going to be easy. We're going to use these constants to evaluate this integral. So let's do the part b right here. The integral of 2x over x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 1. Well, we've decomposed this into these simpler fractions, and that's going to make the integral easy. So a is 1 fifth over x minus 1. I'm just following this right here. My next term here is b, which is 1 fifth as well, over x plus 1, plus cx, so minus 2 fifths x plus the value of d, which is 0, I won't bother writing that, over x squared plus 4. And now, really, we've transformed this complicated-looking integral into the sum of three much simpler integrals. So what do we get here? This, this integral is easy, right? Uh, this is just uh, 1 fifth ln of x minus 1. And this is 1 fifth of ln x plus 1. Now, this is a different here, right? This is x squared plus 4. This is not going to be ln. This is actually, um, we, do you want to use substitution on that? We don't really have to. I think it's easy. Uh, sorry, this is ln, but it's, uh, uh, well, let's, let's use, well, I, don't, I don't want to use substitution because it's, we can just do it in our heads. The way I think about it like this, if I have x squared plus 4 on the bottom, I know it kind of comes from ln x squared plus 4. Just on the side here, if I do the derivative of that quickly, what do I get? I get 1 over x squared plus 4 times 2x, right? And why don't I just write it like this? 2x over x squared plus 4. How, how close am I to getting what I really want? I would really like this, instead of being a 2 here, I'd like it to be a negative 2 fifths. So I already have the 2 there. That's nice. But I'm missing the minus 1 over 5. So really, all I have to do is make this 
a minus 1 over 5. Uh, if you don't like thinking like that, you could do a little substitution here. You could let u be equal to x squared plus 4, and then you would arrive at the same answer. But eventually, when you get comfortable, you can kind of skip the substitution, and you just see the answer right away. And this, doing these kind of hard integrals, you're hopefully getting close to that stage of being able to uh, go directly from here to here. But if you like the substitution, that's no problem. And this is our answer, so we're done. Um, I guess we could combine this a bit up. We certainly can factor out the one-fifth everywhere. So that's nice. Um, we get that. And why not put stuff together? We don't have to, but we could, it's pretty natural. We have the ln of a sum, so that's the ln of the product, right? It'd be x squared, x minus 1 times x plus 1, right? Minus ln of this x squared plus 4. And then we have logarithm, a difference of logarithms, and that can be transformed into a quotient, right? So we could write 1 fifth ln, big absolute values, x minus 1 times x plus 1, all over x squared plus 4 plus c. And why don't I just multiply out the uh, top here. You know, x minus 1, x plus 1, that's a difference of squares. So that's x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4. And that's a pretty nice way to leave our final answer, I think. So there we go. That's our answer for this question.